Do you know the whereabouts of the informant? No, ma'am, I do not. Is he missing? Apparently, yes. Um, uh... In a world that's rife with both way too much information and way too little, people have a hard time discerning reality from possibility. This will bring down the president of the United States. There's a fear of losing control of the world around us, and there's a prevailing, albeit irrational, insecurity that someone else out there is smarter than we are. Whistleblowers, yes, they are missing. They're either in court, uh, they're in jail, or we cannot talk with them at this time because they can't be found. This is a very real situation that we're talking about, and our investigation is so important, Steve. So we overcompensate, diving into esoteric rabbit holes, unhinging ourselves from palpability, embodying the worst of Dunning-Kruger while throwing around buzzwords like Dunning-Kruger. Right now, the GOP is pushing one hell of a claim that they, admittedly, have no evidence to back up. Maria Bartiromo on Fox News wants to know why the quote-unquote mainstream media isn't reporting the unfounded claims of a non-story. The 36-page report laying out the details on how the Biden family operated its foreign business enterprise, the mainstream media either ignored or outright dismissed the story. Following the report's release on Wednesday, none of the three major news networks, ABC, CBS, or NBC, devoted a second to the story during their evening newscasts. Meanwhile, major news publications, instead of conducting investigative journalism into the Biden's business activities, they quickly brushed off the report. Apparently, Fox News doesn't think of itself as mainstream, which I don't know if that's a little bit of self-reflection, but that's what it kind of sounds like. Have they finally acknowledged that their reporting is often fringe and conspiratorial? Maybe, but I'm sure they'd spin that as a good thing. Their viewers know the things that those other guys don't want them to know. So a few days ago, House Oversight Chairman James Comer decided to blow the lid off of what he referred to as the Biden crime family, alleging that members of the Biden family received millions of dollars in payments from foreign entities in China and Romania, including during the time when Biden was serving as vice president. Comer cited bank records acquired by subpoena, which showed payments made to companies with ties to Hunter Biden. Now, the truth that I can tell everyone this morning is we have not lost the submarine, Joe. Actually, that whistleblower <laughs> is very safe. Um, but he does fear for his life, and rightfully so. Look at what we are up against. These are the most evil, corrupt people that have ever uh, existed in American history. It's unclear what the point or intention of these revelations are, considering Hunter Biden was not serving in the White House while he was allegedly making these deals. And the committee does not contend that the payments were illegal. Making money overseas on its own is not illegal. The report does not show any payments made directly to Joe Biden himself. Comer's case against the president is weak if non-existent. His evidence doesn't seem to reveal anything groundbreaking apart from suggesting some sort of quid pro quo. But now his informant is allegedly missing or in jail or hiding. They're sneaky people. But members of the GOP don't seem to think a lack of evidence pointing to any criminal activity should deter people from accusing the Bidens of criminal activity. After all, criminals don't want you to see their criminal activity. They're very good at hiding their criminal activity. So you just have to assume it's there. So basically, the fact that there is no evidence directly linking Joe Biden to criminal activity just proves how good of a criminal he is. The lack of evidence is the evidence. You know, I thought that Joe Biden had dementia. Is he mentally unwell or is he a criminal mastermind? Please clarify. Look, maybe there is something there, but currently there isn't. We haven't really fingered him. And I don't know how important this informant is. Informant, I don't know if there's anybody else that could do it, but it seems to me that's going to leave a very big missing link. The GOP is desperately trying to make this into a bigger story than it is, and they're flabbergasted that members of the media, members of the DOJ, and the FBI don't seem to be taking their nonsense claims seriously. But in order for this to be an actual story, there has to be something to go off of, not just Marjorie Taylor Greene's word that this will bring down the president. What will bring down the president? Until they can answer that question, they've got nothing. 
Of course, their supporters and Fox News viewers, as we know, don't hold evidence or fact in high regard. They prefer to be lied to, and we know this because on the rare occasions when Fox News tells them an objective truth about something that they don't like, they either boycott the network or the host. We also know that they operate an awful lot, an uncomfortable lot, on faith and belief. Those things don't require proof or empirical evidence. And they probably think they're somehow more informed on issues than non-Fox viewers because they know about things that most other people don't, like that the government is burning down food factories or that sunblock actually gives you cancer, not the sun. And the GOP members who are pushing this story are deliberately manipulating the American people, exploiting the nationwide fear of the unknown, the hopelessness with corruption, and the anxiety of trying to stay one step ahead of disaster and or embarrassment. They know what they're doing. No evidence is evidence. The informant wasn't unreliable or non-existent. He was disappeared by the Biden crime family. The Bidens aren't just enriching themselves with foreign deals that may or may not be illegal. They're eliminating people who would dare oppose them, ruthlessly and surreptitiously. If the Bidens are doing something they shouldn't be doing, and if Joe Biden is or was complicit during either of his stints in the White House, then I'm sure we would all like to know, not just the Republicans. However, there doesn't seem to be anything to know at this point, and the possibility of crime does not equate to a reality of crime. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel, and be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks.